In this Debaco University video, hope to try to reduce some of the complications when looking at nitrogen as a fertilizer uh, when trying to grow plants. So nitrogen may just be one nutrient, but it can perform a lot of different kind of transitions. It can as can become very complex in the different forms that it takes. The hope here is to try to reduce some of those complexities. We're gonna look at soil nitrogen complexities to better understood with a nitrate test. Uh, and at the end, some fertilizer recommendations will be provided, at least in general, uh, to act as a general summary here. So the impact of nitrogen on plants. So nitrogen is an important nutrient to be looking at. It's because it's part of all living cells. Nitrogen promotes green leaf growth, and lack of nitrogen commonly can limit plant growth. Plants uptake nitrogen in the form of nitrate, NO3, or ammonium, NH4, with the nitrate form being preferred by many garden plants. So it's not only just the nutrient, it's also the um, molecule that comes in to help impact and change how it might be open to uptake by a plant. So again, why focus on nitrogen? Well, even if levels of all other nutrients are sufficient, you may still need to add nitrogen each year. Despite the many different nutrients in the soil, nitrogen is likely to be deficient if not managed properly. Nitrogen is variable, so understanding and managing it can be a challenge. Proper management of nitrogen will help ensure optimum crop performance and minimize the potential negative environmental impacts. And the reason why you need to continually usually fertilize with nitrogen is because it has a tendency to leach from the soil. While other minerals be, tend to hold in the soil a little bit longer, nitrogen has a tendency to leach out from year to year. So when we're looking at nitrogen recommendations related to a soil test, Keep in mind that since nitrogen levels can fluctuate widely depending on environmental conditions and can change during the shipping process of that soil test as it goes from where you sampled it to the lab. This element is not measured in a routine soil test. This is why there is this thing called a June nitrate test which tests specifically and only for nitrogen. The nitrogen recommendations are based on crop needs as an estimate by field studies combined with presumptive, uh, the presumption that little available nitrogen remains in the soil at the end of the growing season. And here we just see some examples of looking at nitrogen recommendations, looking at cotton, nitrogen removal in pounds per bushel of corn and soybeans. So again, it's good if you have some sort of uh, crop to match us up with, but hopefully with all of these can kind of develop that general sense of uh, what's a good target level when we're taking a June nitrate test. So the nitrogen cycle. Now nitrogen has many different chemical forms uh, and it changes as part of the full nitrogen cycle. Some uh, are more plant available than others. And that's an important consideration. Not all nitrogen can be uptaken by plants. Nitrogen makes up the vast majority of the air, about 78%, but this is only usable by legumes, which can fix this form into other plant available forms. So even though plants are constantly exposed to atmospheric nitrogen, which is the vast majority, 78% of the air around them, most plants other than legumes cannot utilize that form of nitrogen. You're looking at mainly the nitrates being what's being able to be absorbed uh, by plants here. Uh, also some ammonia as well. But others can be leached out and not uptaken by plants, so not only do we need nitrogen in the soil and around the plant, we need it in the proper form for uptake. So what are some commercial nitrogen fertilizers? We'll have the ammonia, which, which includes anhydrous ammonia, and at room temperature, ammonia is a colorless, uh, pungent smelling gas that is uh, lighter than air. At minus 28 degrees Fahrenheit, ammonia is stored as a liquid, and ammonia easily dissolves in water. This makes it an efficient form of delivery to plants, but it must be injected below the soil surface to be delivered to plants so it's not uh, commonly done in rocky soils. It needs to literally be injected below the soil surface as it's going right along. We're gonna go through and inject it below the soil surface and cover it up. If you have rocky soils, the kind of the point of injection can break, and therefore it's typically not used in soils that tend to be very rocky or regions of the country that tend to be rocky. Calcium nitrate of 1500 is water-soluble and fast-acting form of nitrogen fertilizer. 
Urea is very potent. It's 4600, 46% nitrogen. It's a very efficient source of nitrogen, but requires soil microbes to change its form of nitrogen to become plant available. It's best if incorporated into the soil or watered in shortly after application to avoid nitrogen being lost to volatilization where it becomes a gas and goes into the atmosphere and not uptaken by the plant. There's also organic forms of nitrogen fertilizer, such as manures. They can have high levels of plant available amounts of nitrogen, but you want to watch the type of bedding that may come with the manure. Uh, for example, if it's sawdust or other fine wood products, this will reduce the amount of plant available nitrogen because it may actually be uptaken as part of the decomposition process of that sawdust. Then there's soil organic matter, and nitrogen is released in the process of mineralization as organic matter as soil microbes break down that organic matter. And we kind of have this kind of process going on in the soil when it gets to a proper temperature. Then there's a blood meal here. This has a 1210, 12% nitrogen. It's a high nitrogen content organic fertilizer. Now, changing forms of nitrogen, as I said, we have nitrification, which is the biological process of converting ammonia, which is NH4+, to nitrates. The nitrate N is negatively charged, as we can see right here in ion, that is not attracted to soil particles or soil organic matter like the ammonium is, so it's more commonly easy to leach. You have two negative particles, they're going to kind of repel one another. As a result, that's going to have a tendency to leach out of the soil. Then there's denitrification, which is bacteria converting NO3 to NO2 gas, and that would kind of the NO2 gas would be lost to the atmosphere. That would be through, through the process here of volatilization. Then we have Im immobilization, this is when nitrogen is assembled into compounds or materials that is not plant available, such as plant residues. It's another way we can, quote, lose nitrogen or have nitrogen that will, cannot be of benefit to the crop we're trying to grow. Now, how is, can nitrogen be lost? And I say lost in the sense that we know where it goes, but lost in the sense it cannot be uptake or utilized by the plant we're intending to grow. There can be leaching, and this is physically loss of nitrogen due to excess water additions. It's most likely to occur in sandier soils. That denitrification is typical loss of nitrate forms when soil is saturated with water for two to three days, particularly if there's prolonged rain events. Volatilization is when the surface applied nitrogen is not incorporated into the soil, it's just applied on top, because this can lead to nitrogen being lost to the air. Conditions that increase the rate of volatilization is a soil pH higher than 7.3. Also, hot air temperatures and a moist soil surface. So if you're in the hot of summer uh, on a basic soil with just after a rain, it's going to improve the efficiency to be volatil volatilized and not uptaken by the plant. There's also crop removal we must take into consideration. This is simply removing plant material that has nitrogen in it will naturally reduce nitrogen in the soil. And this is actually how the majority of nitrogen leaves the soil system when the crop is harvested and taken off site. The nitrogen that's in that plant is also removed with it. And then there's soil erosion and runoff, and these should be minimized for the reasons in addition to nitrogen loss, but also don't want to be losing your soil. And this is why cover crops are highly recommended in open fields. Now, there's two key forms of nitrogen, as I said, that ammonium and that uh, nitrate form. While there are many forms of nitrogen, including both organic and inorganic forms, plants can only use these two forms. Plants only take up inorganic nitrogen in the form of NO3, nitrate, or NH4+, um, in the ammonium. So all other forms of nitrogen are intermediate forms and cannot be directly utilized by the plant. They might be important in the cycle, but as far as what the plant can uptake, these are the only two forms that the plant can uptake. So which one is better? Well, in short, neither. Just remember that nitrate is always present in the soil solution and will move with soil water. So again, keep that in mind that it's not like, oh, I want to choose one versus another. They both can be utilized uh, by the plants. We're looking at those conversion forms of nitrogen. Inhibiting the conversion of our ammonium uh, to nitrate can result in less nitrogen loss and more plant uptake because the whole goal through this entire process is this important part here of plant uptake. And see, we see here the nitrate form and the ammonium form can both be uptaken by the plant. They're the only forms. Our goal here is to limit the chance of this being converted or leached, or this being kind of immobilized, or this kind of being leached out of the soil or part of the soil runoff or volatilized. We want to make sure we're having as uh, great as percentage that we can uh, going through plant uptakes. So we're not losing a whole bunch. We're not wasting a lot of that fertilizer. 
as well, how can we reduce the waste of nitrogen fertilizer? Well, growers can work on ideally the timing of that fertilizer. If plants are fertilized too early, the risk for lost nitrogen does increase. Growers should try and time the application with plant uptake. So what does that mean? Well, here we have a corn plant as just an example. If we fertilize very early, uh, we're going to lose a lot because the roots are going to be small and also the demand for nitrogen is reduced. When we're looking at the uh, corn, again, as another example, 37% of nitrogen taken up by post-flowering, post 63% nitrogen taken up by flowering phase. So when we're looking at fertilizing, we want to time that for a little bit later in the growth cycle when the demand goes up, because what that's going to do is allow our nitrogen in the soil to be uptaken by the plant at a greater efficiency, simply because the plant is demanding greater amounts of it. So as promised, what are some common fer nitrogen fertilizer recommendations? You know, what would I kind of in general kind of recommend? And just some common fertilizers, calcium nitrate is great to use when soils are colder. For more plant available form, but it's only 15% nitrogen, you have to take that into consideration. That calcium nitrate is very plant available, but only 15% nitrogen compared to some of the others. Urea is great when the soils are warmer but be sure uh, to water it in uh, to avoid potential volatilization. And this is 48% nitrogen. Now I make that distinction because if you're adding a pound of calcium nitrate and a pound of urea and think they're, oh, they're both nitrogen fertilizer, that pound of calcium is 15% N and that pound of urea is 48% N. If we can scale this up to 100 pounds of calcium nitrate, of that 100 pounds of fertilizer, only 15 of that would be nitrogen. Comparing that to urea, 100 pounds of urea, 48%, almost half of that is going to be nitrogen. So keep in mind that there is no best form of nitrogen. Trying to better understand this, taking a June nitrate test. There's other videos on that here on this channel that you're welcome to take a look at to try to better understand nitrogen. Why? Because you typically need to add it every year and it does change quite frequently. So being able to best understand the conditions and the process and cycle of nitrogen will help you make a better grower and help improve your plant performance.